I'm sitting for my vascular registry soon. What study tips do you have? Well, I recently developed a hack that will help you start off in the right direction. Watch to the end to know every single detail of what you need to study and along with what I use to study. I sat for this registry exam after gaining one year of experience in working in this field. I definitely feel like that helped me because I didn't have a huge vascular foundation from school. My school focused more on abdomen and OB, GYN. So I felt more equipped for those to sit for those exams right out of school, whereas this one I took my time with. It was definitely hard for me to focus on studying when I was working a full-time job, but I knew I had to be dedicated in order to be successful. I studied for about a total of two months, just like I did with all my other registry exams, and I'd suggest having study sessions five to six days a week for about one to two hours each session. Now, what I recommend for every single registry exam is studying according to the exam content outline provided by the ARDMS. If they are the creators of the exam, you should probably follow what the creators tell you to study. So for example, if the ARDMS tells you this subject is going to be 40% of your exam, would it make sense to only spend 10% of your study days studying that topic? No, it will make more sense to spend 40% of your time studying that topic that you're going to get 40% of the questions on, right? So I'm going to show you exactly how to apply this concept to a real study schedule using a formula. First off, I need you to grab your vascular technology content outline from the ARDMS, a trusty calculator, and a calendar. We're about to get organized. We're aiming to study six days a week over a span of eight weeks, which totals up to 48 days. Here comes the interesting stuff. Mapping out our study plan based on the content outline. Let's get started. Let's work from the highest tested category to fill up our study schedule. First up, we have pathology, perfusion, and function. Weighing in at 32%. So here's the fact I discovered. We're going to multiply however many days, total days that we're going to be studying for the exam by the exam percentage. So we're going to multiply 48 days by 32%. And that gives us 15.36 days. We're going to round down to 15. So we are going to plug in 15 study days into our calendar dedicated to studying this topic. So with one day per week, we have eight days covered. Let's add in the next seven. Great. So we've got pathology, perfusion, and function taken care of in our study schedule. Moving on to normal anatomy, perfusion, and function. That comprises 21% of the questions you are going to be asked on the vascular exam. So let's plug that into our calculator. Take 48, multiply it by 21%. That gives us 10.08 days, round down just 10 days that we need to study on that. So I'm going to put one per week and then a couple extra. I'm going to put this at the beginning of the week because we want to have our basics, the normal, down first. Great, so we have normal anatomy, perfusion, and function squared away. Next up, we have quality assurance, safety, and physical principle weighing in at 14%. So let's plug that into our formula. 48 times 14%, 6.72. So... We're going to round up to seven days that we need to be studying quality assurance, safety, and physical principles. Guess what, guys? I didn't have my microphone plugged in the whole time. At these types of moments, I have to talk to myself and I say, calm down, Drew. Calm down. It's okay. Okay, let's move on like nothing happened. Okay, so where were we? Oh, I was counting. 
Okay, so we've got the seven days for the quality assurance, safety, and physical principles. So now we have physiologic exams weighing in at 12%. 48 times 12% equals 5.76. So we're going to round up to set up to six days that we need to study physiologic exams. I'm going to put three and three. Now we have preparation, documentation, and communication. It's only 8%. Let's see what 8% of 48 days is. That is 3.84. So we're gonna round up to four days that we need to be studying over preparation, documentation, and communication. All the clinical stuff. Next, we have ultrasound guided procedures and intraoperative assessment at 7% of our study days. Let's do 48 times 7% equals 3.36. We're going to round down to just three study days on this topic. And last but not least, we have surgically altered anatomy and pathology that we need to dedicate 6% of our time to studying. 48 times 6% equals 2.88. So we're going to round up to 3. So we're going to spend essentially the same amount of time studying this topic, surgically altered anatomy and pathology. On two. Now, if you notice, the last three exam categories that we covered total only 21% of the exam. Now, ask yourself, would I be able to pass if I don't know every single thing about each of these less heavily tested topics? You probably could, as long as you know the other things, the other topics, like the back of your hand. However, it is always to be overprepared than underprepared. So you will definitely have to weigh how much you want to know about surgeries and procedures for this exam. Now, I'm going to color code this study schedule. Y'all thought I was going to do that? Yeah, because it's looking very basic right now. So let me make it look pretty. Okay, now we're back in rear beautiful. Okay, almost. Can you tell that I have a touch of perfectionism in me? How do you actually use this study schedule with the resources that you have? Pay attention to the chapters that are in the exact book or resource that you are using. When you look at the study, the study schedule and you see, for example, normal anatomy, perfusion, and function, you need to be focusing on any chapter that covers normal anatomy, perfusion, and function. For example, you should be studying carotids, renal artery anatomy, lower extremity venous anatomy. Another example with the physiologic exams. When you see that on your study schedule, you should be studying the arterial and venous physiological exams wherever that is covered in your study resource. I will be providing some actual study tool suggestions at the end of this video. Stay tuned for that. Remember, this study tool suggestion is just that, it's a, it's a suggestion. It is not one size fits all. Feel free to tweak this according to your own study needs. If you're not grasping a particular subject, you need to study more of that subject. Add some more, add more days on that subject to this study schedule. Or if you feel like, oh, I got this topic down pat, then decrease the number of study days that you have on this study topic. But at the same time, just review everything, everything that you have covered in the last week or two. Remember, work smarter, not harder. You could easily make your own study schedule based off what you learned in this video. Just multiply however many total study days you're going to be studying. Maybe you want to do five instead of six per week. I recommend at least having one day off. That's why I left all Sundays off on this study schedule. Have one day off during the week where your mind can just rest. Now for the exact details that you need to make sure that you study on this exam that I promised, look at this expanded list of topics that are on this detailed outline, the lower part of the content outline. Before you start diving into each study category, oh, I'm gonna study this, I'm gonna study this, 
I recommend reading this list to target your approach because you might think you need to study a certain thing, but you need to make sure you know the specific things that are on this list because they will show up on your exam. At the end of every two weeks or so, I recommend returning back to this list. Going line by line, ask yourself, am I familiar with every single topic on this list? Am I able to perform every single thing that it's asking me to do? And I want to highlight a few things for you that kind of stood out to me when I was going over this content outline. For normal anatomy and perfusion, it's asking you to know mesenteric vascular and renal vasculature. These are exams that we perform as much at work, but you still need to know them for the exam. Same thing with intracranial cerebrovascular exams. Also, pay attention to thoracic outlet syndrome and then extrin extrinsic compression. Extrinsic compression, you see that again. Definitely pay attention to those things. Now with surgically altered anatomy. EVARS, endovascular aneurysm repair. That's definitely listed as part of the categories. I don't remember ever studying about this when I took my test, but it's on the content outline now. So providing guidance for venous ablation procedures. That's something you would want to review. So those are all the things that stood out to me that I was not that familiar with when I took my exam, but you want to pay attention to now. Now, what study tools do I recommend? Besides the content outline, of course, I'm going to give you a few different suggestions. If you don't have a lot of hands-on experience with vascular imaging, or you don't understand the basics of Doppler imaging, then I recommend checking out the circulatory skill set. This breaks down hemodynamics, knobology, and how to obtain accurate images using simple language. It also includes an interactive section, and I'll post some reviews here. If you already have an understanding of hemodynamics and Doppler imaging, then skip to this study tool. I recommend using a dedicated vascular textbook. The vascular book I used was the Davies Vascular Technology Review Book. The last thing I used were some Edelman question cards. Now, the review book already had review questions, so I didn't necessarily need these question cards, but they did help. Now, the bottom line is you don't need more than three resources to study. Don't confuse yourself with more than three resources that you will be using on a daily basis. The three resources ideally would serve three different purposes for you. Number one, it should teach you basic anatomy and physiology. Number two, it should help you review the material with the use of questions. And number three, it should have real life applications so it can help you apply what you're learning into the real world. So speaking of that, I am working on a vascular series here on YouTube, which breaks down how to perform different exams step by step. I'm making it super simple, simple language so you can understand it and apply it in your job. I'm going to be explaining why we examine each organ. And when you understand the why, this can also help you on your registry exam. I hope this video gave you some clarity on where to start and especially how to study. It's not always what tools you study, but how you study is most important because if you study the wrong things, even with the right textbook, chances are you're not going to be as successful on the exam. If you found this video helpful at all, please give this video a thumbs up. And stay tuned for more tips and tricks on vascular scanning, as well as preparation for other exams. Catch you in the next video.